Our topic is going to be memory I.O. versus port-based I.O. There's two different ways to connect I.O. devices to a microprocessor. You're going to interface them, and one way to interface them is to have them show up exactly like memory devices, and there's advantages and disadvantages of that. The other way to do it is what they call port-based I.O. Um, pretty much they're interfaced on their own system with their own separate address lines. You don't really get to choose this, but the microprocessor that you choose um, to use is actually going to do this for you. So uh, this topic is located in the book. Uh, if we switch over to there, the textbook that we're doing, uh, it's on page 803 and 804. It talks about the hardware requirements for basic I.O. programming. And they mention memory mapped I.O. first, so we'll start there also. Um, your memory op mapped I.O. interfacing, um, as we said, your I.O. device appears just like a memory address, and you have to select that device on your system using address decoders. Um, and when you address decode to the device that you want to select, you can't use those memory addresses in your normal memory system. Uh, some of the older microprocessors didn't have much memory, and then when you interfaced uh, I.O. devices into the memory system, you were taking away from the memory that you would have available for there. And it usually wasn't just one address, it usually was a block of addresses that were used. Um, the advantage of doing memory mapped I.O., which is probably the most popular method from the past, uh, but the biggest advantage is the fact that it's simpler. The instructions that you use to access the I.O. devices are the exact same instructions that you use to address memory. Um, sometimes it's so simple it can become a little bit confusing. So you have to understand how your, um, have the schematics so that you can understand how your I.O. devices are mapped, uh, what addresses they respond to, but uh, basically just use the same commands that you do before in the instructions that doesn't have to change at all. Um, disadvantage obviously is it uses up some of your memory and do it. Um, so this is discussed on this page of the book and if we move to the next page uh, in the textbook and we look down through here this is where port based IO um, is done. It, it's referred to with many different names uh, but port based IO is the one that I'm used to more often than anything. Um, but you can see that this discussion in the book centers around the diagram that we have here, and we'll take a look at that and explain that in a second. But the first thing we want to do, um, when you're hooking port-based I.O. devices, the microprocessor has its own port address lines, and it's almost like building a whole different memory system. Uh, it takes a lot more pins from the IC to do that, but you're not using up any of your uh, normal memory um, and, the, and the port devices, they're limited, maybe 255, which would take eight port-based address lines. Um, but it's uh, simpler to, to keep track of, you know, this is an I.O. device and this is a memory device. Uh, they're definitely different. Uh, disadvantage is you, you definitely need separate instructions from that and to implement separate instructions into an IC makes it a little bit more complex and it's taking up more room in the IC for that. Um, just a decision that microprocessor manufacturers in the past uh, took and used. Um, so let's take a look at this diagram which is a memory, uh, I'm sorry, uh, port based I.O. Uh, diagram. So we're gonna change the screen over here so we can actually point some things out. Um, so if you take a look, these uh, that we have this address bus um, here, it's labeled high order address lines. It really should be more uh, uh, more accurately labeled port based memory address lines. And you can see that the port-based memory address lines are separate from the uh, regular address bus that's there. 
Now the picture isn't entirely accurate. Um, we probably could do it a little bit better for, for now, it's okay. So we have these address lines that come down here, and then we're going to decode those address lines using, um, in this case, not a decoder, just individual um, NAND gates. And that's going to say when I put this address on here, in this case FF is the address this device is responding to, that's going to select this IC and that's going to be an input port. You can see here's the data coming in when this chip is selected uh, by the instruction putting the address for the IO device on there, it's going to be selected and we're going to be able to take data and put it over this data bus and take it to the microprocessor because that's what an import port does. Down here is an example of an output port and with an output port we're going to have um, data come from the microprocessor and these output devices are going to be able to respond to that. In this case we have very simple um, just a group of LEDs for our output port. So. Um, we have to select this chip like we did before, so if it's a port-based instruction, the instruction is going to hold the address, and that's what this decoding is doing. That address is going to come down here, select the chip. These read-write lines also deal with the direction that it's occurring. That's part of the decoding, um, the direction that the data is flowing. And once you uh, have this chip selected, you can get data then from the microprocessor to this device and that'll make the LEDs light up the way it is. So pretty, it's, it, it's exactly like address decoding um, for memory back mapped I.O. except there's two different systems there. So hopefully that clears things up and does, and does that. If you want more detail, we're going to get into it later, but if you want more detail, if we go over here to a Google search and search for port based I.O., and I scroll down here a bit and, you know, as usual, go with your sources that you think you understand or they're pretty good without errors. Um, Wikipedia is always a, a good source. It's uh, everybody's editing it in there. It's not always the simplest source. There's a lot of detail there. So here's a link um, called Memory Map I.O. versus Port Based I.O. I'm going to select that one. And if I scroll down through here, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it, but I think the explanations in this section um, or this this uh, resource on the web are pretty good, so you should read through those if you want to. Um, like we always say, do your own search. You do have to know the terminology to get that search. In this case, I searched with port-based I.O., and I came up with a lot of sources to do that. Last thing I want to point out is, as usual, um, I usually link resources that I think are pretty important. Um, this is our online portal system, and I'm in the EET 178 course, and I'm under coursework, and I've changed to student view, so it looks like what it will look like for you. And any link that I put in here is in each of these different sections. In this case, the microprocessor section, a little late in the book, so it's a little bit uh, scrolling down here until we go get to where we want. You can see the microprocessor fundamental section, and there's a presentation section that holds all of my PowerPoints and videos for the course, and there's handouts, and that's where you'll find the resource for this. So hopefully that clears things up for you. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later.